Okay, so let's start the afternoon session with a talk by Martin Elsman about programming explicit effects in the RayML. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> yes, so this is uh, the context here is uh, effectful high order programs. Uh, and the, um, w the issue is that it's uh, quite difficult to reason about these programs, in particular the effects uh, that may occur uh, when you have uh, mutability um, and other effects, exceptions, and so on. Um, so um, the particular uh, context here is, um, is, is uh, memory management and uh, reading inference, but, um, but I just want to emphasize that this, of, this of course, goes uh, beyond that. Um, but uh, to begin with, we, we would like to make good use of memory. Um, and uh, in this context here, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about the ML kit, which has uh, this region-based memory management model uh, and uses region inference. Um, and one of the questions there is, is it actually going to, to make good use of, of, uh, of memory? Or will there be too much garbage which is not collected um, at runtime? Uh, so that's that's one thing, and then um, then once you start adding uh, threats uh, to such a model, you may ask uh, other questions about uh, mutation raises, but also allocation raises. Uh, there might different threats might uh, refer to different um, uh, or to the same to the same um, regions, and that means that when they allocate, they might raise for the allocation point or for that region. Um, and then, of course, uh, we would like also to be able to, to reason about uh, whether some function will, will uh, potentially raise an exception. Um, uh, and we, uh, we can also uh, ask whether a function um, will mutate any shared resources. So um, the in particular context has been here for, uh, for combining uh, task parallelism um, with, uh, in the context of ML, uh, and there's been a lot of work on that. I'll also get back to other related work in the area later on. Um, but in particular, I want to emphasize here that, uh, that this thing, uh, this idea of adding threats to, to ML raises a lot of questions about memory management. Uh, and that has been explored uh, re in the recent years. So uh, a little bit, uh, just a primer here on, on uh, region-based memory management and region inference. So, um, so this idea of region-based memory management will allow the programmer to associate lifetimes with, um, with objects and values. Um, and uh, they do so uh, through these regions. And that means that, uh, that uh, you, can, um, you will be able to reason about when they allocated these regions, when you allocate into the regions, and then when finally you can safely uh, deallocate the regions. So in contrast to explicit region-based memory management, region inference uh, is basically the task of inserting these um, annotations in the program at compile time. And then hopefully uh, the inference algorithm will do a good job at it. Uh, but that might not be the case, of course. Uh, so there are, there are programs that are just inherently dynamic in uh, memory management behavior. And that means that you might not really know uh, and get any static guarantees about um, the uh, reuse or, or deallocation of memory. So in this context, we're going to propose uh, a, a, an approach that kind of combines these two uh, things, with being explicit or being implicit. Uh, so we propose this, um, this uh, REML um, framework where, a, um, where you basically allow for, for annotations, but you also depend on really an, an inference algorithm underneath. And we're really just going to to be using uh, the model of uh, region-based memory management and region inference that is um, uh, implemented in the ML kit. So the, the, uh, that model uh, has the um, features that it organizes the heap into a stack of regions. So we have the, the uh, region stack here. Uh, first, there's a region R0 allocated, and then uh, it basically grows, may grow. But after... Um, uh, after a while, you might still allocate into these regions that are uh, lower on the stack. So R2 may actually increase in size. And the way that's implemented is uh, by um, uh, using a, a stack of pages, uh, or free list of pages, sorry. Uh, and that free list may then um, 
uh, efficiently be uh, be um, be uh, managed by the by the runtime system. Once you deallocate a region with potentially many pages in it, in a constant time, that that uh, free list will or that that uh, list of pages will be um, augmented to the free list, and then other other regions may may make use of that um, uh, of those pages that have just been freed. Um, and then, of course, the idea is then that uh, that we have this region inference. That we will we will take a program and then we'll try to infer uh, and associate all all uh, allocating um, expressions are then associated with region variables. And then there's this inference algorithm that will try to unify uh, based on uh, on the type system. And then we will try to uh, to see when when it can actually get uh, get rid of regions again. And the source language that uh, I'm just going to give you, this was from back in, in Pobble 94, where uh, Tov de Talpang has this calculus of uh, the, the lambda calculus extended with, uh, with uh, uh, recursive functions. And then here we have extended also with this let spawn uh, construct that allows us to have multiple threads um, working um, in the system. But, um, but this is a source language, and then there are possible annotations. So um, uh, whenever you have an expression, you may uh, wrap around it a let region construct. And the idea there is to uh, allocate a region uh, <coughs> on, the, on the stack and associate that thing with, with, uh, uh, with, um, uh, with a variable row here. And then within E, all allocating expressions will then refer to a region, and it, in particular, it may refer to that region uh, being allocated there. And then you can, then uh, this will be the model for allocation. Um, so here we see uh, some expression annotated with an at construct, specifying that that there will be an allocation uh, inside that row. Once you read, uh, reach end here, the idea is, uh, and that's a g kind of the goal, of course, of the type system to guarantee that it's safe to deallocate that region at that point. Uh, and it's uh, a region and um, it's an effect type and effect system that will, that will allow us to, to make that uh, guarantee. So here's a, a small example. Uh, let's consider that we have a language uh, extended with pairs and that integers themselves also go into regions. In real life, they won't. Uh, they will, of course, live in registers. But here, for the sake of the example, uh, we see here a, um, an expression, let y equals, and then there's a let region construct. Two regions are allocated, row and row prime. And then we have a local uh, binding to a variable x here. We construct a pair, which we save in row prime. And then there are three, uh, two integers, three and four, which are allocated in, in row and row double prime. Um, so we see here that row double prime is global to this expression. Um, and Region inference has figured out that row and row prime can really be deallocated at, uh, here at the, at the end point. So what happens is that we construct the pair, then we extract the second component, and after that we can get rid of, of the regions occupying, um, or holding the pair and also holding the, the, uh, the number three here, and then continue. Okay. Um, so then the question becomes, so how do you actually uh, extend this to, um, to a larger language? And the first thing that comes to mind is that it's, it becomes necessary to, to add regions as parameters to functions. Uh, and because otherwise you will basically um, uh, unify too many things and, uh, and uh, one expression may, may, uh, may have a particular influence on other parts of the program. Um, so the, re the way to go about it is to allow all, all functions to take regions as parameters. And then we see here a, a, um, a function f takes a row uh, as parameter. It will just uh, store a number five here in the region. And then locally, it can call, it can call func uh, the function f uh, with a row prime. But notice here that the row prime can be local to the context in which the application occurs. Whereas if you did not have region polymorphism, then um, different calls to f Will will um, will mean that that you will pile up val uh, this five uh, several versions of five uh, will appear in that region row, right? So it's important to have the feature of uh, of um, generalizing over over the regions, and then uh, what we see here is that the uh, type system will then 
allows us allow us also to express this polymorphism in region in regions, um, which means that here we can see that it will put something in row, and so on. So in Reml, uh, we would like to to uh, to basically uh, make it uh, well. First of all, I should say that a standard ML program is also a valid Reml program. So we want to start with with something, and then then. Uh, basically add uh, annotations that will allow us to, to uh, make certain that certain guarantees we have obtained also survive um, edits of the programs of various kinds. You want to be able to have it uh, to, to behave as you have uh, engineered it even after changes to the program. So, so um, there's this one exception, there's a region uh, declaration you can, you can make here. So you can declare function f and then you can have a local region r and now you can refer, say, uh, specifically say that that uh, that we will store something in in the region R. Uh, we can also decide to use a global region instead. Uh, there are some built-in global regions, and this is just the the pair region uh, of the global one. That they have been they are kind of put into different um, uh, bags of of uh, pages, and that's particular to make it. Uh, also possible to combine with garbage collection, and then you have a very efficient representations of the different uh, kind of um, you kind of have tagle tagless paths and so on, uh, and, and instead you use uh, the regions to to carry the tag of the value. So there's no overhead garbage collection wise for for a number of uh, of, of data representations. Um, that said, so there's a global region here R zero pair. And you can specify and be explicit about that this function will allocate into this one. Um, you can also, instead of, uh, of annotating the, uh, the, uh, the, the values uh, or the expressions where to allocate, you could also specify uh, that the same thing using types. So uh, you're allowed to specify that, well, this variable x here will be given this type in, in times int, but uh, the, uh, the result is going to be located in an R0 pair here. Okay? Uh, and then we can see here, after, uh, after region inference and so on has been carried out, we can, we can basically check that, the, the, that, that this still holds. And we see here the result of the program. We also see something else that region inference has taken care of other things in the program. For instance, that there's a region R15 which has, uh, contains exactly one word, and that will be the pointer to a function. The function itself does not contain any free variables, which means that it will, uh, it will, it will only be the pointer to the function itself uh, being stored in the closure. So that closure is stored in R15. That thing is stored directly on the stack, and, um, and there's no need for heap allocation uh, for those things. And then we have an immediate call here in this case, of course. And this is just, uh, I must say here that here we have, uh, we have basically um, uh, turned off optimizations and inlining. Of course, in the, uh, when that is turned on, you won't get, uh, get this call. You just basically have the beta reduction here at compile time. So, um, so again, you, you also allow, allow the programmer to express that, uh, that uh, the function can take regions as, um, as arguments. And what we see here is uh, that you can compute, you can write a function down that will then uh, store uh, a number of elements in, in an integer list. And really an integer list is, um, oh, sorry, here it was. An integer list is, uh, is basically just a, a, um, a pointer structure where we, you basically chain a number of pairs together, and then the pointer itself will be nil if uh, or null if uh, if uh, if it represents nil, and otherwise it will be the pair uh, itself with a t with a tag saying uh, that it's um, uh, that it's a, a value. Um, so then we can uh, we can see uh, here that we don't really need to to say anything about the body of the of the function. Everything is uh, is uh, implicit in the body, uh, but you have, we have basically expressed that, uh, that all the, ele uh, the elements will be in this region, meaning that, that you will be creating a new region, um, or you will be storing things in whatever region you, you pass into down. Okay? Um, so, uh, so here we can see here that we can, 
uh, we can call down on the region R uh, and a list of five elements, and then we can extract the first element, uh, and then the, the region will be local. Uh, it's it's uh, fair to say that the region can be local here, right? So we can get immediately rid of, of the garbage um, again. Uh, <coughs> we can then have uh, a different concept comes up, so you can ask, uh, uh, and classify certain functions and, and specify that, uh, well, you can call a, a, a function exomorphic if it general, in general stores its result in regions that are different from those uh, containing the arguments. And here's one example, uh, copy, which will take any uh, list uh, of arbitrary uh, content and then it will copy the spine of the list into a, a, a new list and uh, those elements of the second list will, of the, uh, the produced list will be in R2, and then it will, uh, it will take the, the, the list, the original list in R1. And we can see here that <coughs> that copy takes two um, regions as arguments. And now if we forget to copy here, we'll get a type error uh, stating that, well, we, we cannot um, just uh, create a new uh, const cell here and then, uh, which should be in R2, and then use uh, something in R1 for the tail. That is not, um, uh, that violates the type system. Uh, so, uh, so that will be an error. And we see here, um, the, the error message of Reml will, uh, will give you this. You cannot unify the explicit region variables R1 and R2. And here we use this trick also, which is basically comes from ML as well, that the type variables that are explicit never unify. Uh, so you, you're basically just using that trick here to, to enforce this thing. That doesn't mean that you cannot uh, copy uh, with, um, a, in a particular context, you may use copy to actually store into the same region as the argument was. It just says that, that the function copy has that property, that if you give it something, uh, you're allowed to store it somewhere. Uh, the, the, uh, the result will be somewhere else, or could be somewhere else. Can I ask a quick question? Yes? The, re the, uh, the question was, what, what, uh, why don't we see any annotations of the elements here in the, in the thing? That <coughs> so the point here is that, um, that substitution will allow us to use this function in, in, uh, in any region context. So it may be that the regions will be, uh, uh, the copy here will explicitly say that whatever you substitute alpha for will also be uh, contained in the, uh, in the result list. So copy is a shallow copy, right? It's not deep. It won't co say do anything about the the, uh, the 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 elements of the list. They will just be still the same pointers. So the universe of the types that you substitute for alpha can contain region annotations itself, right? Like yes, but and they have to be uh, the same in both the the uh, the the uh, argument and the result. Thank you. Can I, can I also do as well? Yes. Does that mean that you need some kind of thing to say that R2 won't outlive R1 in case you get an element from R1? So the, there's no outlives relationship here, which is very different from, from uh, much other work on region inference. Uh, so here it's, base, it's, it's entirely based on substitutions. So there's no uh, outlives relationship between regions, which is different from the monadic region approach and, and much work that has come after that based on that, which is really using this outlives relationship, uh, that one region needs to live longer than something else. But there's no such thing here. This is cleanly a substitution. I'll, I get a little bit back into that. So we have the endomorphic functions, on the other hand. They are like kind of functions that will, uh, that will like append, right? So they will, uh, it will store its result in the same regions as its argument. Right, so here we see uh, the append function. It takes uh, some x's and some y's, and it produces uh, a new list. Well, part, part of it is new, right? Uh, but it also, it is required that it, it actually uh, fits together with the list in, uh, in, in, the, in, in y's, right? Because it may use that. We can see the implementation here that in the case that the x's is nil, we really return y's. So that means that that needs to be a, 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 an equality between the, the, uh, the type of the argument, the left argument, and the, and the result. Okay? So um, 
if we need like kind of to, to make a, a real copy with a pen, we can still copy wise. Here's an example, copy a pen, where we copy wise and then append that, or X's is then appended to the copy of wise. And then we can get the, the other version of, of a copy that is, uh, of, uh, an, of a pen that basically um, creates a whole new, a whole new uh, list. Okay. So um, there's also region polymorphic recursion uh, supported. Uh, so of course in ML we don't have polymorphic recursion as, as such, but uh, on, on types. But we do allow it on on, um, on regions. And there's a, a very nice example here using uh, using merge uh, in in terms of merge sort, where the local uh, calls to to um, to M sort will use different regions. And for that reason reason. Uh, uh, we will really have um, local use of memory. So uh, the the, uh, the way to write that function is that it's parametric in, uh, in in this region R. Uh, in the case we have um, uh, we have uh, a singleton, then we'll just store that element inside R. Right? It doesn't say that X is itself. That could be in any other region. So we're only explicit here about the resulting region. Which also is kind of uh, this idea that we we uh, we can of course look at the region annotated version of the program, the inferred one, and there we can see much more refined uh, region uh, annotations on the program, including effects and all that, which has left uh, left us up to this thing. But here we are just we are just being explicit about the result, so we can express this thing in uh, in RAML here. The result goes in R. Uh, we have local regions R zero, R one, and R two. We will split. X's into uh, two different, the left and the right uh, version, and here um, uh, these these things will both go in R zero. Okay, the split function will store new lists in uh, R zero, and it's important here that it's it uh, it uh, it's it's basically stores something um, distinct from where the argument is. So split needs to split all the way. It cannot just split and then return the two. Uh, then it's trick doesn't work here, uh, and this is checked by Reml. So uh, then we can sort the left one, sort the right one, uh, allocate the result in different regions. You see it's poly and here we see the polymorphic recursion here, because they they use the local regions, and then we can merge finally the result, and and the merge will then store the the list in R. Okay, and we we are done. Okay, so that's a kind of without using a garbage collector, we basically have, um, and it's not in place as we've seen other word, uh, work here. Uh, it is of course using, uh, or it is using memory uh, besides the, uh, the, the argument itself. Um, then we can be explicit about effects as well. Um, and uh, there's a special annotation here in Reml. I won't say uh, too much about that. Uh, except that <coughs> that uh, that combines very well with with um, with expressing a, a constraints on type on types. I'll, I'll get back into that here. So, um, Reml supports these kind of effect constraints where you can be uh, specific about uh, what kind of effects a function can have. So, in particular, uh, we have constraints of the form that uh, uh, one effect uh, or two effects are really contain no intersecting put effects. So they will store into different regions. This is a little bit different than, than Flix, for instance, where you can say uh, y y this particular this particular effect you don't want. Uh, but here we also have uh, the possibility of of dealing with intersecting, uh, restricting that we are not uh, allowed to to uh, for two effects to intersect. Um, similar for for um, for uh, for allocations also. Um, uh, and uh, and then we have this uh, this uh, no mute construct, which will basically say you you are not allowed to to mutate um, to have any uh, external uh, mutation going on. So let's see here an example working with a local immutable uh, uh, local immutable storage. So we have here a region R, and we see here we store into that we have a mutation on R here, and uh, Reml will complain. Uh, if we remove that assignment here, we can still have local uh, state, and that will work out fine in uh, in Reml. 
there won't be any errors, but uh, otherwise you will get this mutation constraint violation. The effect E contains the atomic effect mutation on this global ref uh, region. And then, uh, just to to uh, to uh, finalize here, um, the um, this idea of of uh, doing uh, doing parallelism uh, is uh, basically uh, so we, we have added support for for threats in uh, in the ML kit underlying lying environment or framework here, and there's this inference that does um, a protection inference that kind of try to identify whether two different threats will allocate into the same region. Uh, and if they will, then this this region will be protected by a mutex, which then needs, uh, and, and that means that the allocation point there's a there's a big overhead to allocate allocating into that uh, those region regions. Um, uh, so that's basically uh, I think what we what we specified here. We have I mentioned the let spawn uh, construct, um, but with um, with Remel, we can uh, we can basically unlock this this uh, this parallelism feature in the sense of specifying exactly what we need from uh, from the uh, uh, from the effects. So here we can say that the two effects of uh, associated with the uh, with the spawn function here for each of the um, and this is the interface here given. Uh, then you can specify that the two effects need to be disjoint using this construct. Uh, and then whenever you call it, uh, you will get that check done. It might be that you can actually, um, should say here, you can you can write then the uh, the uh, MPL uh, version or, or the uh, the par function. Um, and uh, if you do so, of course you can call. It needs to call the spawn function as well to implement that. Uh, and then that will also have to carry a a, a while uh, constraint. Uh, so those constraints, they are really, um, they are really passed um, along uh, for reasoning. So that's, uh, uh, I should mention, this is ongoing work. Uh, part of the system uh, works well already, uh, but there are still some, uh, some, some implementation to, to do. There's also a uh, formal treatment of these effect constraints going on. And I want to emphasize there's a lot of, uh, you know, possibility, of course, for for adding other kind of effect types, uh, mutation, uh, oh, we saw that, uh, uh, but I.O., non-termination, and so on, uh, whether something is pure. Um, and there's a lot of related work out there. Uh, I just mentioned some of it here. Um, but uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for uh, listening. Um, yes. Uh, is it possible in Remal to uh, actually return a region from a function? Is it a first class? It's not a first uh, class system as such uh, right now. Um, this is something we should we could definitely explore. Right now we have this region stack. It's intertwined with the with the C stack uh, in an implementation. So so uh, it would be great to have extensional regions and so on and. Uh, and maybe some other mechanism for, for, for working out with this. These uh, constraints you showed, the microphone on. Ah, uh, could you? Yes. The constraints, um, they're always written explicitly by the programmer. Is that? They are written explicitly uh, when they are important. If you, uh, you saw the spawn interface and the par function, um, and, uh, and then they are checked. Uh, if they are still, um, everything is checked. But uh, but once you reach another effect variable, this is where uh, where there's no automatic inference going on. There you need to have from the context you need to specify. But if you, for instance, call map inside something, uh, all the effects there will be propagated uh, automatically uh, through the. Uh, so I'm just wondering how this affects. Um Principality of type inference and so on. Does it? What? What? What's your correctness property for? For type, for, uh, for for type inference, yeah. For, uh, for completeness, do you have a complete, complete type inference in the presence of these things, or is this sort of are they sort of orthogonal, layered on top of your usual ML type system? 
it's it's on top of the uh, so maybe I don't quite understand the uh, question, but let me say that there's for any ML program you can annotate, and there's a there's a simple proof that you can you uh, how you can. Um, uh, how you would be able to I guess my point is you couldn't infer these things I guess in general it's no you couldn't infer so of course here you saw also Reml would come up with an error uh, if if the constraint is violated it's not that it will guarantee that, that then the regions will be disjoint mm -hmm. if it if it type checks then um, uh, then it's safe so if that was what you meant by completeness yes that then as soon as you start adding these constraints then, of course, the original, uh, you cannot be guaranteed that the original ML program will actually have a, a, a type completion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that thanks.